Good luck, girls. Hi, everyone. All right, I'm going to warn you. I'm at, we're at the low-tech table today. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit more about an approach rather than a specific technology, so my fancy MacBook isn't out today. Um, so, I work at Mercy Corps, which is a global international NGO. We operate in um, over 40 countries worldwide, in specifically countries that we term transitional environments. So those are countries, you know, post-disaster environments, post-conflict environments, or countries affected by kind of the chronic challenge of poverty. Um, and we go into the country, help to immediately stabilize the situation, and then using community-led, market-driven development work, uh, allow them to uh, get to a point where we can then graduate and it's, it's that kind of a recovery point. Um, so I'm going to talk about two kind of specific approaches that we have using technology to kind of reach our overall um, social goal. And both of them, you, you work with, um, you know, local private sector institutions, local government, to extend the reach of essential goods or services into poor areas, make them relevant so that they're there longer term. Um, the first is kind of in the financial inclusion space. In Haiti, post-earthquake, we um, worked with a local mobile network operator who is about to launch their commercial mobile money service to make it uh, relevant and inclusive of the poor. Now, for those of you who don't know, mobile money is essentially, you know, the ability to take the, your cash and tie it in an electronic way to your mobile phone number. So now, you know, you don't have to store money under your mattress. It's in a safe, secure, convenient, immediate place. Um, so we worked with the mobile network operator um, to really develop the ecosystem in, uh, in rural environments, um, in poorer areas where it wouldn't have been of immediate commercial priority to go there, um, but helping to pave the way for these, these, these systems that could be in place post-Mercy post Corps systems. And we did that by channeling through our own development programming, doing financial literacy training, doing kind of beneficiary mobilization and training, um, etc. Um, another approach that we have is around youth employment, and in the West Bank and Gaza, we teamed up with Google to um, incubate a network of Arabic language app and ICT entrepreneurs. Um, and what you see broadly is across the internet, about 5% of its users speak Arabic, about 1% of the Arabic's content is, or the internet's content is in Arabic. Um, and so obviously that drives kind of Google's bottom you know, business model. Um, and we're also interested in looking for opportunities for youth employment. Um, you see a large um, graduation rate or a high graduation rate of ICT skilled professionals, but they're not necessarily tied to market linkages that Google's really you know, aware of. And so how can you bring in Google to really teach them the, the, trendy, um, the, the trendy drivers in the app space, the, the uh, you know, entrepreneurship space? Um, and we can provide them with you know, business expertise, local technology training, access to capital, etc. Uh, to drive uh, youth entrepreneurship and youth employment. Um, so those are kind of two top line approaches. Again, how do we work with um, how do we work with local private sector institutions? We're also interested in you know conditional cash transfers via mobile phone, so that those those cash payments get directly into communities in a way that's direct, immediate, and secure using electronic channels. Um, I'm happy to answer any other questions or keep talking about some of the other work that we're doing. All right, I'll talk about um, one other thing that we're working on, which is um, mobile agriculture work. And so what we're doing is bundling mobile financial services with uh, farmer extension services, pricing information, weather information, etc. What we've seen is that, um, you know, there's a lot of interest around uh, pricing of weather information um, that, that dies uh, post-donor funding because in-farmers haven't really been willing to pay for it. What we've seen is that financial institutions are really interested in reaching into these new markets um, and that they're willing to pay for this information to make these products more relevant to their clients. We're also helping them with designing financial instruments that are relevant for these populations. Again, working with these partners so that once we leave, these systems are still in place for in farmers and Indians. Everybody stop talking a little bit.